What do you use them for? Bookends. Bookends. What are they made of? They're alabaster bookends. They're very nice. And basically the books would go in here, right? They're made in Italy, they're hand carved. And the best carvers, you know, Michelangelo and the guys are of course the Italians. Value on that pair, about $250 for the pair. They date to the turn of the 20th century. I like the one where they just run through the whole movie. <laughs> I was on an airplane once and I watched this young girl and this other guy just run through the whole movie, the new Star Wars. I don't know what they were running about, but she did not stop running through the whole two hours. I was like, well, let's just watch people run. I think that's why Peloton and those people are so popular. <laughs> just watch them run. Zumba classes. Show me the other ones. You got four more in a set, right? You got five in the set. Dun, dun, dun. Be careful. Don't rip them. <laughs> cardboard box isn't good, right? It off gases. You don't want them in a cardboard box. There's C-3PO, my friend and yours, R2-D2. Don't rip them, be careful, put down your purse. Hey sir, how long you married? Yeah, seems it. <laughs> These two. 37. Were the first five good? <laughs> first two! <laughs> uh -huh. I know, see my audiences are fun. Wedded bliss. Bliss, you're telling me. Are certain ones more valuable than the other? Is the whole collection together more valuable? Stormtrooper's pretty valuable. R2-D2 is pretty valuable. Uh, of course, uh, C-3PO, because everybody likes gold. He's my favorite, right? I love jewelry. And then, of course, I've got Chewy here. Chewbacca's here. Value on the whole set, about $1,200 for the whole set. Nice. Okay, thank you very much. See, it was worth getting up out of your seat. Um, this is a German violin. This violin is a Hermann Friedler violin from Dresden, Germany. The mark inside has nothing to do with the reproductions of Antoninus Stradivarius. So I'm on a cruise. You know I travel all over. And the couple says, I want to have dinner with you, Dr. Lori. I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. So I just think, oh, that's nice. They just want to, you know, meet me, blah, blah, blah. Do you know anything about violins, Dr. Lori? <laughs> you know, I don't just get invited to dinner, you know, or when I do get invited to dinner, it's, can you come and praise my whole house and I'll make you dinner? <laughs> well, on a cruise, it's, I'll invite you to dinner because, well, everything's free anyway, I already paid for it. <laughs> okay. So this couple who owns a very big company that you would all know on this cruise says to me, we're thinking of buying a Stradivarius violin. I said, wow, that's wonderful. Are you musical? Oh no, we're just thinking of buying it because we can. In so many words. So that's nice. So I said, well, do you know that it's the real thing? Oh yes, we've flown in the best violinist from Vienna to play it before we buy it. Wow, that's great. So they're gonna be in Los Angeles and they're gonna basically, this person's gonna play the violin and see if it's really terrific. Because they need to basically see the tone of it. Okay. Now we're talking five, six million dollars here. It's not like, oh, a couple hundred bucks, so I'm gonna buy a violin and I want the appraiser to tell me what's what. You don't have that kind of violin. <laughs> not even close. But your violin is a nice violin made in Dresden by one of the premier 19th, early 20th century makers. Wow. Value on this violin, about $650. I'm not kidding. The case is still 25 bucks, <laughs> but it's a nice violin. This is a three-piece place setting. There's eight of the three-piece play settings. Yeah. Okay, this is a dessert set. Cookies, cake, cheesecake, I don't know, what's your favorite kind of dessert? Tiramisu, I mean, you name it, right? And then the cup, is this a tea cup or a coffee cup? It's not tea, people. This is coffee. When it is broader, larger, it's coffee. When it is smaller, slender, it's tea. When it's really, really tiny, it's espresso. Okay, that's a pour over. Have you ever had a pour over? Oh my gosh. So they wanted to give me an Americano. So first you have to go, what's an Americano? Well, I know an Americano is what the American soldiers drank. But when you're in Starbucks and you're gonna pay $900 for a cup of coffee, you don't want an Americano because it's mostly watered. It's watered down. A pour over is a little better. 
tastes a little better. You want the brew. You know, brew it. Use the electricity. You're, I'm going to pay you the 900 bucks. <laughs> and I do think they put drugs in it. I do. Because once you have, a, I know you're laughing at me, but once you have a Starbucks, you're like, oh, I have to have Starbucks. Where's Starbucks? I mean it. I don't know if it's crack or what the heck they're putting in it, but they're putting something in it. Because now I'm like, oh, I have to have Starbucks. Can't have another coffee. I don't know. Those guys are doing something, Seattle. And then they have the, do you want room? Don't you want room? I'm like, can't you just, it, or then they have the names. Small, medium, and large is not used when you go to Starbucks. You have to know the names. What did you say? It's a tall and a what? A grande. And a grande is medium. Like, I'd be grande. I am not medium. <laughs> anyway, you have a service for eight. This is a coffee cup, 22 karat gold banding. It's made in Japan. You have a set of eight for the dessert set. Value on all of them, the whole dessert set, about $250. Nice. You know, the mark right on the bottom, the gilding, right, all the guild work, and then it matches too, all right? It's nice. And remember, the mark has to be the same. If the marks are different color, if the marks say different things, but they're the same company, that means that your family or whoever collected them, collected them at different times. You know, they can make the same pattern for a long time. Nice. Same, same, same. I like it. <laughs> What's your name, honey? Kyle. Thank you for running up here and trying to help Kyle. Now go away from my table. <laughs> Find Dawn. Where's Dawn? Hi, Dawn. I need you to speak into that like the top of it like your Beyonce, you know, gonna put a ring on it. <laughs> you know. I won't be brokenhearted. <sighs> you won't be brokenhearted because it's sentimentally valuable, right? Oh, it's not? So you don't care? Why am I wasting my time on this? <laughs> it was in a box with what? Somebody donated some stuff. And donated some stuff? For, well, it, was 20 it was 20 years ago? Doesn't smell bad. You must have a nice closet. Do you have like cachets in there, little sachets? You know, you hang them in your closet. They make it smell pretty. Do you have those in there? Because this doesn't smell bad. Doesn't smell bad, but in terms of value, what do you think? How old is it? Well, come on, yes you do. Look at the well, snout. It's, like it's, it's, at least from back in the 50s. it's from the 60s. Okay. From the 60s. Are you really taking a picture of me with a with this? You're not waiting for a better picture. <laughs> All right, that's okay. I'll hold this up while you take the picture, and I'll tell you that your stuffed animal is from the 19 from 1960s. It's valued about 15 bucks. Should I pitch it to you? No, <laughs> I won't. All the way from Seattle. I just did a show there. It wasn't raining. Interestingly enough, and everybody's calm in Seattle. They're very calm. You're like, really? They, they were. I thought everybody would be hyped up on Starbucks, you know, it's Seattle. But you get off the plane and it's all like, oh, yay, it's SeaTac, everything's good. You know, that might be the cannabis. Maybe not, I don't know. They're nice, they're fun, I love Seattle. Seattle, how do we acquire this? Hi. What are you doing? I know it's you. You moved like you moved like you were a center on a football team. Like, okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> are you, I can see it. It's in your knees. I'm at Penn State for years. What do you think? I don't recognize a football player? <laughs> I went to Michigan undergrad. A football player? You know? Bo Schembechler and the guys. How'd you acquire this? Why this? My mother would like this. Madam Rosary Beads, we used to call her. <laughs> 1910 frame. The frame has a market value of about $75. It's in very good shape. The image inside is a lithograph, of course, of Jesus, the Lamb of God. And this particular, it's not that goat either. <laughs> There's a goat on the other side. I don't know, it's not that. I had to learn it. I don't know goats, lambs, animals, you know. I had goldfish as a kid. Any of you have goldfish? Because that was a clean pet. My mother's like, you could have goldfish, nothing else, goldfish, clean. Value on this piece, about 25, about 75 for the frame, so 100. Oh, so this was in one box and this was in another box? And you put them together. Slag glass, made in England. They're English slag. They are a match. They date to about 1920. Ah, a little earlier than that, about 1910 to 1920. Value on them, $50 for the set. Is your daughter-in-law from the 1950s? <laughs> no. She's younger than that. Gotta be, right? 
because you're not even from the 1950s. This, partic this particular piece is Masonite board, right? This particular piece is Masonite board, which tells me it's from the 1950s. This side is oil paint, relatively well executed. In art history terms, that means he's a pretty good painter. So he bought it at an estate sale. The frame is junk, junk, 25 bucks, made in Mexico. So they put a junky frame on a pretty good painting. How much did you pay at the estate sale? Did you get a bargain? How much? 20. The top of the microphone is here at the top. There you go. $20. $20 for a $200 painting and a $25 frame. Good job. Nice. Dates to the 1950s made in China. Pre-coronavirus. <laughs> you know, pre. Did we all learn this? One of my graduations, I think it was high school, I got a sewing machine. I have used it twice. <laughs> I wanted jewelry. <laughs> hey, I remember it. It was, but it was not this sewing machine. This was probably mom's, not yours. This particular piece is a nice one, and this was to teach children, young children, in the early years of the 20th century how to sew. So they were functional. And remember, Singer wasn't the best sewing machine, Singer was the best marketer, right? Jackson Pollock, not the best abstract expressionist painter, I know, I've written the books. But basically, eh, he had good marketing. Singer actually wanted to get everybody, the way Kodak wanted a camera in everybody's hand, Singer wanted a sewing machine everywhere. Value on this piece, about $65. Early 20th century. Your great-grandmother had it. And it's a Miller lamp. Sometimes they're Aladdin. Sometimes they're Buell and Howell. Yours is a Miller. Relatively well-known brand name for these lamps. It hasn't been repurposed. It's American, it's called the Juno lamp. And you have a chimney, which is clear glass, and then you have another um, shade that goes over it, which was green glass, cameo glass with white underneath. This particular piece has been electrified. They didn't, they did, oh gosh. They enlarged one of the holes around the bottom to get the wire through, so violated the lamp. That's here and it's been electrified. An original oil lamp like this, and it's a lamp, not a light, it's a lamp because it has a fuel source. Value, uh, time period for this late 19th century. Value on this piece, if it wasn't electrified, probably $350. Now that it's electrified, $150, <laughs> okay? But it works, and you like it. And you plug it in with this plug, this plug from the 1960s, <laughs> into the wall, without the third prong, right? Really, really dangerous. <laughs> but it works. All right. That's what you got, 150. 1880, 1900. I won't go 150 years old. Is that okay? Sorry. <laughs> and the reasoning for it, it is a turned bowl, right? Wood turner, and then someone had to also paint it. I think two different people are working on it. Somebody turns the bowl and somebody paints the image. Now, it's been somewhere dusty, hot, temperature change for a while. Um, cleaning it is a no-no at this point. You've got to just leave it the way it is. You can't put mineral spirits on it or anything to clean it. You've got to just love it the way it is. Um, I do think it's of German origin. Could it be of German origin in your family? Irish. Oh, you're Irish. Okay. I don't think it's English. I don't think it's Irish. I don't think it's American. I think it's German. Value on it, I would say $175. It's very nice. It's dirty, but it's old. So you've got a sword and you've got a scabbard, also known as a cover. The grip is original, hasn't been redone. You've got a little bit of the leather lost here, so it's wooden and then they place leather on top of it and then they wrap the leather with a cord that's metal. Not very sharp. Not really gonna do too much damage. How'd you acquire it? Was your wife's first husband? <laughs> so you're getting his junk plus her, right? You happy? Yeah. Things are good. Okay, value on this particular piece, which dates to the latter part of the 1870s, value on this piece anywhere between $125 and $150. It's nice, French, nice. 
All right, got a lot of French swords today. Ta da! <laughs> yeah, it smells like salt. That's why it's deteriorated. If you had sugar in it, it wouldn't have deteriorated that fast. Salt, you know, it's abrasive, corrosive, if you will. Um, you, did you have another? Did you have other things? Do you have sugar? Do you have salt? Do you have pepper? Or do you have a whole set or just this one? That one's worth $15. It's from the 1940s and it's um, made in New Jersey. Nice. So it's not a, it's not like a national cash register from Dayton. It's not like a, oh goodness, a royal typewriter. It's a Smith typewriter. Before Smith Corona, a Smith Premier typewriter. It does still move, which is good. And you can see how it all works. All the workings are here. You don't have the case in the back that would hide all of this. You've got some embossed areas on the back too, these little flower panels on the back, making it look decorative, decorative here on the sides as well. The fact that the carriage, which is this whole piece, and of course the keys move easily is wonderful. Value on that typewriter, anywhere, well, value on that typewriter, $150, $160. Nice. <clears throat> the case is in included in the $160 value because you have to have the case to carry it, otherwise you're not carrying it the right way. How'd you acquire the wall hanging? In Ann Arbor at the ReStore. Nice. What do you know about this particular South Asian, also known as Indian God? This particular God is, is um, Ganesh. And Ganesh is one of the major gods of the Hindu culture. Very well known. If you put in elephant god, India, into any Google or anywhere else, you will definitely find all kinds of background. So this particular piece is on a piece of brass. A lot of you are shopping at thrift stores. A lot of you are looking at brass pieces. And a lot of those brass pieces come from India. I had some yesterday at the event that came from India. Big tables, usually inscribed or embossed. Yours is both. So what you have are you have these different elements. You've got copper, you've got a silver or base metal that looks like silver color, and then you've got the brass. And then you'll notice that it's flat here. Well, that flat plate has this embossed plate on top of it. So it's really two plates. You can actually even see where they are fused together. That's why you have the embossed area with the texture and the flat plate on the back. You get it? Now, these are popular in the 1950s and 60s, which is an exotic time period for the decorative arts. We decorate our homes in America with pieces that are exotic or relate to other cultures. Hence, India or the Hindus. Value on this piece, about $75. How much did you pay at the thrift store? $4.99, there you go. <laughs> That's a thrift store find, nice. 